show that the function y of x equal to 2e to the 2x minus 3e to the 3x is a solution to the differential equation y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. Then sketch the graph. Okay, first we want to show that our function is a solution. So we'll need to compute y prime and y double prime, arrange terms as they are in the equation, and then show that zero comes out when we add them up. So first, y prime. The main trick we'll use here, derivative of e to a function is just e of that function times the derivative of the function. So that's just a chain rule. Now, if I have e to the 2x, its derivative is just 2e to the 2x, e to the 3x, its derivative is 3e to the 3x. So as I go through y, what am I going to do? Well, here I multiply by 2, here I multiply by 3, giving me our first derivative, and then the same trick to get the second derivative. We multiply by 2 here, multiply by 3 here, I have my second derivative. Now, instead of y prime, I want minus 5y prime, so I'll multiply through, and then I want 6y, so we'll take y, multiply through by 6, and then what do we note? If I add down each column, okay, collecting e to the 3x, e to the 2x, we get 0. So our function is a solution to that differential equation. Now let's sketch the graph. So first note, domain is going to be all real numbers. Okay, the exponential function will take any number you put into it, so there are going to be no points that are excluded here. Next, let's put some points on the graph. So if I put 0 into our function, we have e to the 0 is equal to 1. So we'll get 2 minus 3 gives me a minus 1. That gives me this point on the y-axis. Now how about the x-axis? Well, that's just solving our function equal to 0. So we'll want 2e to the 2x equal to 3e to the 3x. Divide both sides by 3. Divide both sides by e to the 2x. We'll have 2 thirds equals e to the 3x over e to the 2x. Since they have the same base, we subtract exponents, leaving me with e to the x. So I have e to the x equals 2 thirds. To get the e out of the picture, we apply natural log to both sides. Natural log of e to anything is just anything. So we'll have an x. And then on the other side, natural log of 2 thirds. I go to the calculator and get minus 0.4, roughly. So that'll give us this point here on the x-axis. What else can we do? We can take the limit as we go off to plus infinity in x, or the limit as we go off to minus infinity in x. If we go off to minus infinity, let's take a look. Well, where do e to the 2x and e to the 3x go? We take a look at the graph of e to the x, we'll see that this, as I go off to minus infinity, goes off to zero. So raising to the second or third power isn't going to change that. They're still going to go to zero. So as I go off to the left, our function goes off to zero. How about on the right? So as we go off to plus infinity. Here, we're going to compare e to the 2x, e to the 3x. If you draw their pictures, e to the 3x is going to be on top as you get large. So e to the 3x is going to dominate in our function. So as we go off to plus infinity in x, we take a look at what's happening with the e to the 3x term. e to the 3x goes off to plus infinity, but since there's a minus 3 out in front, it's going to switch to going to minus infinity, which means we're going to look like this, going down that way. Okay, that's everything we can do without the derivative. So now we take our derivative and start working on that. So we've already worked out the derivative. That's going to be right here, set that equal to zero, look for a critical point. Going through all the work we did before to find the zero, here we just note the answer is going to be x equal to natural log of 4 ninths. Now if I put natural log of 4 ninths into the function, so I can actually plot the point that goes with our critical point, we know we're going to get a slightly positive number, so it's roughly 0.13. So if I'm at minus 0.8, which is what natural log of 4 over 9 is going to be. That's going to be behind our 0 here, and it's going to be slightly above the x-axis. So that's my critical point. 
Now all I have to do is check a point on each side, get an idea of increasing and decreasing, and then we can just connect the dots. So I check two points. Okay, on this side, we wanna put zero into the derivative. So what happens there, we'll get a minus five, which gives me negative number. So I'm decreasing on this side, which we could have guessed from the behavior as we go to plus infinity. So here we connect the dots. And then on this side, we could try say, well, minus one is gonna be on this side of minus 0.8. So if I put minus one in there, okay, we grind that out and I get a 0 0.09. So we're gonna be increasing on this side. Okay, I go from our asymptote x-axis, come in and increase up to our critical point, And that's a rough sketch of our graph. Okay, we could do concavity, but this is close enough.